Hey everybody, what's going on? Matt from Customs by Matthew here and welcome to another episode of Custom Figure Showcase. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at this little dude from Scud the Disposable Assassin. His name is Drywall. So this figure was made for my good friend Opticon Customs and it's been on my radar for about six years now. Uh, back in 2016, the Foosh Summer Swap, I received Opticon's list and it was just full of unfamiliar characters to me. A um, lot of stuff out of my comfort zone, uh, especially because at the time I was mostly making custom 90s X-Men uh, with a splash of MCU stuff sprinkled in. So um, most of it was pretty out of my element, to say the least. Uh, but yeah, I decided that I wanted to challenge myself and um, and I kind of narrowed the list down to two candidates conveniently from the same comic book series. There was the Crime Lord Jeff and the sidekick Drywall. I ultimately chose Jeff back in 2016. Clearly I was feeling confident. As you can see, it is a pretty big departure from what were my typical X-Men customs of the time. Fast forward back to 2021 when Opticon and I decided to do a figure swap. I told him that the only stipulation was that I finally got to take a crack at Drywall, a figure that seemed like such an impossible feat six years ago. Drywall is Scud's trusty sidekick. His body contains an unlimited amount of storage space, which holds everything from weapons to furniture. He has zippers all over his body that open and allow him access to his vast armory. I wanted to somehow capture this unique ability. I came up with the idea of doing a selection of swappable open zippers, complete with a bendy arm and hand. As for weapons, he was adorned with everything from guns to a flaming toaster. Drywall started as a Star Wars Black Series T-Bow the Ewok, with an Into the Spider-Verse Prowler Marvel Legends head. I started by shaving him down to essentially nothing, using my Dremel. I had to remove a lot of plastic in the knee and elbow joints to prevent paint rub, especially since this figure would be 100% reskinned. I decided I was going to have to sculpt his mitten hands, so I gave him some SH Figure Arts wrist pegs for maximum range of motion. His open zipper hands came from random Marvel Legends figures, as did a selection of his weapons. All the sculpting on this figure was done using green stuff, mainly because it doesn't cure as hard as Ave's epoxy sculpt. I also needed the zippers, particularly the removable ones, to have some flexibility to them, which would not have been possible if I used epoxy sculpt. I fully reskinned each part of the base figure by pressing out green stuff into a thin layer that covered the entire surface of the part I was working on. I did this over multiple sessions, just to ensure I wasn't putting my fingers in my freshly sculpted work. Once the hands were made and the entire body was resurfaced, it was time to sculpt the zippers. I started with the permanent ones. I placed them randomly all over the body and left space for eight more. I then drilled holes where those eight zippers would be, put a piece of tape over the hole, and sculpted the zipper onto the body. Once they were cured, I just peeled the tape off and the zipper came off the body with ease. I glued some small magnets that fit perfectly into the drilled holes on the backs of the closed zippers so they would stay securely in place on the body. For the open zippers, I bought some bendy wire with black plastic coating. I cut some small segments to act as the arm and stuck a hand onto the end of the wire. I then plugged the opposite end into the holes on the body. Using green stuff, I sculpted some open zippers around the base of the wire where it plugged into the figure. The paint job was fairly simple on this guy. I started with a couple coats of my usual grey badger primer. I then laid down a few shades of blue. Once the blue is finished, I masked the entire figure and left just the zippers exposed. I sprayed them all with Army Painter Yellow Primer, which really helps keep your yellows popping, especially when you're going over blues. Something I learned from my early X-Men custom days. I used three different shades of yellow to get the final look, but once I unmasked the figure, I really did not like how dark the blue was. <sighs> so frustrating. So I ultimately ended up masking all the yellow zippers and repainting the blue a bit lighter. I'm glad I did it in the end, but it definitely was a pain in the ass and a huge buzzkill as I was approaching the finish line. Accessories for this figure were a project of their own, the biggest and most taxing of the three being a Piranha water cannon. The backpack was made out of a Ghostbusters harness and a couple of clear tubes. The cannon started as a random Marvel Legends gun with lots of added sculpt. I added a magnetic water blast made of hot glue that attaches to the nozzle of the gun. 
I sculpted a couple different size piranha and made molds of them using blue stuff. I then made multiple piranha copies to fill out the water tank. I also made him a flaming toaster and an old timey looking cartoon bomb. So this figure was really important to me for a couple reasons. Um, the first being that it was for a good friend and it was a long time coming. And um, it's crazy to me that six years ago, I made him a figure and we pretty much have been chatting um, on a daily basis ever since. Um, that blows my mind away. Uh, but the other thing that is really special about this, this custom is that I kind of consider it the turning point of my customizing career. That list that I got from Opticon in 2016 um, really forced my hand and uh, pushed me in a direction that I wasn't super comfortable in. And it, it taught me to kind of take a chance because ultimately I was, I was pretty happy with the final product um, when I was pushed out of my comfort zone. So um, yeah. And uh, it was super cool to have this all come full circle and get the opportunity to do another figure for Opticon. Uh, and this time to finally get that drywall figure finished. And even cooler to see pictures of drywall with uh, Scud and with the custom Jeff that I made Opticon six years ago. Very cool to see it all come full circle. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping us a like. If you have any questions or comments about drywall, you can just leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to hit that bell to be notified anytime I go live or post new videos. And up next, we'll be taking a look at one of my final figures of 2021. Stick around.